Hi everyone. Well, you know what you're here for. It's part two of my progesterone series. And if you haven't watched part one, definitely stop what you're doing and watch that video because it's really going to help this video make a lot of sense. In the first video in this little mini series that I'm doing over on YouTube, I answered a lot of questions about the safety of progesterone, why you should or shouldn't use it, and also why it's really sold to women so much. So check that out, stop this video, and then come right on back. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch. I'm the clinical program director of the Menopause and Midlife Clinic at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. And it is my passion to really give women across the globe basic education and information on all things midlife and menopause because it really is a black hole out there. So I'm so excited to have you on the channel. Please like and subscribe this video if you've found it helpful, if it gave you some kind of pearls or wisdom, and you wanna join this amazing community over here. I'm also on Instagram at hormone.health.doc and really let you guys weigh in on what topics you guys wanna learn about next. So let's get right on into it. And the first point I'm going to cover is when do I use progesterone? So I use progesterone for anyone taking estrogen who has an intact uterus. And I covered this again in part one, but the reason to do that is to decrease and prevent actually uterine cancer by taking estrogen only. In fact, it wasn't until like the late eighties, early nineties that scientists realized that taking estrogen alone could predispose your uterus to uterine cancer. So to counter, counterbalance that, we give you a progesterone. So anyone on an estrogen has to take a progesterone with the exception, and this is important, with the exception of vaginal estrogen. Vaginal estrogen does not go systemically, so you do not need to take a progesterone if you're taking vaginal estrogen, except for the femring, because the femring is a vaginal estrogen that works systemically. Two, sometimes I prescribe progesterone for women who have trouble sleeping. It's actually a really great tip or trick that I tried when I was doing a lot of internal medicine before I really just started focusing on doing menopause and midlife and perimenopause consults. But for a lot of women in our 40s and into that perimenopausal phase where symptoms really start, we start to develop new onset trouble falling asleep. And progesterone can be really helpful for that. So that's another the reason I prescribe progesterone. And the third reason I prescribe progesterone often is in perimenopause, it can help regulate periods and it can also kind of help, I hate to use the word balance, but it can really kind of help to um, really equal out the estrogen and progesterone in equal parts, if you will, um, especially if someone doesn't want to take, say, for example, birth control pills or the progesterone only mini pill. I will try postmenopausal progesterone in those women and that may confuse you, but definitely that's a really case by case basis and when it's really actually helpful to see a menopause clinician in the office. Do I have a few postmenopausal women on progesterone only? Very, very, very few. And again, they're all really sort of very individualized, unique and different scenarios. So that's really why I use progesterone. And let's talk about how I use progesterone. So there's two main ways that you can use progesterone. The first is you can use it continuously and that really that word means using it every single night on a continuous basis. And I should say night because I do prefer my patients take progesterone at night. In part one, I talked about how progesterone can be quite relaxing. So especially at night, I think it's a better bang for your buck. The second way you can take it is cyclically. And just like cyclically sounds, you take it on a off on cycle. And typically in my clinic, the way I do that is 12 days of the month you take it and the rest of the days you don't. And I use the days, calendar days one through 12, you know, of every single month, just so I'm always on track. Do I always 100% of the time do that? No, but I definitely use that as my default. So if someone is telling me they're taking it cyclically, I know that they're usually taking it days one through 12. Now, is there a particular way that that's preferred? No, this is where an individual choice really comes in. So it's going to be hard to answer this question via YouTube where I'm talking to a camera, 
but certainly it's something that I'd love to give you a little bit of information on so you and your clinician can make the best decision for you. A lot of my patients take it continuously, especially if it's combined in something. So there's a lot of pills that are combined estrogen and progesterone. Because they're combined, you can't really take them apart, so they end up just taking it continuously by default. They take it every single night. Now I have some women who take separate pills of estrogen and progesterone, and that's where you can decide if you wanna take it continuously or cyclically. Now for my patients who wanna take it on a continuous basis, for some of them, they like the benefits that it gives them at night of feeling sleepy and relaxed, and so therefore they would prefer to take it every single night. Some of my patients feel like it's more of a hassle to remember if it's off, on, off, on, so they just prefer to take it that way. Now, if we're going over to the cycled, why do people do it cycled? Well, sometimes I do this, especially in patients in very late perimenopause, which I have a great video here on early versus late perimenopause, or into early menopause where they might have a little bit of bleeding. And if they're gonna have bleeding, when we cycle the progesterone, the bleeding pattern is a little bit more predictable, which makes my patients a little bit happier, and therefore they prefer to do it that way. In a cyclic type of manner, there's also just less exposure to the progesterone, you're taking it less often, and some people just really like that idea. Oh, well, you know, if I don't have to take it, you know, 30, 31 days of the month, then I really only need it 12 days of the month, which that's true, 12 days is the minimum you need it to protect your uterus, then some people just prefer to take it in a uh, more of a uh, cyclic manner. Lastly, I should say some people don't love progesterone. It does give them side effects like feeling bloated or moody, and so they just much rather take it less often than more often. And lastly, let's talk about what formulation of progesterone do I typically like to use. Well, the main type of progesterone that I really do probably favor is micronized natural progesterone. This comes in 100 milligrams up to 400 milligrams. I mostly use 100 and 200 milligrams. And I decide that based on how much estrogen you are taking. And I, you know, up it to 200 if you're going on a little bit of the higher side of estrogen, or I can get away with using 100 if you're using a little bit of a lower dose of estrogen. And then sometimes Sometimes I do some really funny things like increase your progesterone or decrease your estrogen or vice versa and that is where you know that individualized customized tailoring really happens on a case by case doctor to patient basis. And these videos are not direct medical advice, they really are meant for education for you and to help you have discussions with your clinician. There are plenty of other formulations. There are um, formulations like norethindrone, which are a lot of times in combination with some of the estrogens, and then there's other things like progesterone acetate, which is in combination with conjugated equine estrogen, and the brand name for that is PremPro, the pro part being the progesterone. Now, I probably use that much less frequently, and that was a medication that was used in the Women's Health Initiative, and the reason I use it less frequently is because I feel as though it has more benefits and less side effects, and I like that I can control for the dose a little bit better. Now certainly what dose you're choosing, what formulation you're choosing are between you and your clinician, but that's just a little bit on how I think through progesterone to help you make the decisions that are best for you. And lastly, I have some women who really do not like the progesterone, it gives them a lot of side effects, whether it's bloating or it could be weight gain. Um, and for those women, they will choose to use a Mirena IUD to protect their intact uterus. Remember, if you don't have an intact uterus, you do not need to take a progesterone. And I really wouldn't suggest it unless you have other issues or effects that make me think it would be beneficial to do a trial. So I have a great video here on why and how to use IUDs in perimenopause and menopause, and I really actually think this is a very underutilized and awesome idea, and it's something that I have a lot of patients opt to do. They like using the Mirena IUD, which is a progestin-releasing IUD. There are other ones, so I shouldn't use brand names, but that's certainly the one you're going to hear. It's the most popular. And that progesterone, it works locally to protect your uterus, and you don't have the systemic effects of taking a progesterone. So it's just one less hormone that you have to take. And I really want to say, I don't think progesterone is bad or good. It's not about, is it bad or good? It's really just more, is it actually what 
you need or is it just a company sort of pushing their product on you? Not all progesterone is created equal and definitely I think you're gonna get the most benefits from an FDA approved progesterone option that you're guided through with a really specialized clinician. That's really going to be the best option here. So I hope you guys really enjoyed that. If you like this series, I know you will love my course and I created my course with you guys in mind. It's a compilation of so many questions I have gotten over the years being on social media and it really helps you sift and think through what's gonna help you the most on your menopause journey and gives you lots of tips and tricks on how to talk to your doctor and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. I will link the description for the menopause course down below. And as always, thank you guys for liking and subscribing to my channel here. I love, love watching this channel grow. This is gonna become such an awesome place to be and hang out and I thank you so much. If you like this, share it with a friend, share it on your social media. I will see you guys next week for a brand new video. Bye everyone.